What does it look like to have a top percentage Genshin Impact account? How do I build so many characters to such a strong level? What are my best character builds? And what do those individual artifacts look like? Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. And this is part two of my account review, where I'm going to go over the builds of my characters. If you want to see my impressions of all of my characters, then you can go check out that other video and which ones that I would personally wish for again and why. But but here I want to go through each character's build. So we'll start with Navia. Uh, she has her signature weapon and I have farmed her signature artifact set. Navia is my second favorite DPS in the entire game behind Raiden so I've definitely put some resin into making sure I get together get her build together. I got pretty lucky I would say with her artifact set overall it only took me about a week of farming and I was able to get her artifact set which is honestly insane. Um, I don't believe I was resin refreshing at the time I, I was farming for these artifacts so I just just got insanely lucky but yeah this is an incredible flower with only one I guess two missed stats but an incredible stat line overall even with the attack there um, the feather not as crazy but still quite good the stands the reason why I went with this stands is because I needed a little bit of ER and I needed more crit damage than my crit rates so although it's not my highest crit value stands it's still pretty good and it has some ER my goblet is honestly just it would be completely beans but having the ER is actually very valuable for Navia in certain comps and just overall just for a comfortable play. I'm a kind of person who likes to have a little bit of extra ER. And then my hat, it's going to be it like it could have like rolled a little bit better, but it'd be really, really hard to replace this. The amount of resin, like overall our stat line is 26.6 ER, which is on the upper end of what you want for a Navia. And to be honest, that's my favorite place to be. I like to have a bit on the upper end. I have a decent amount of additional attack from my artifacts and my crit value is over two. 200, about 205 there. So I know overall stat line is 81, 184. This puts her in one of my better built characters. It puts her in the top 6% of all Navia, which, you know, isn't a crazy, crazy ranking, but top 6% still very respectable. And I'm overall just very happy with the character. The one thing I need to do is get her talents up. Once I like my, for plunge, oh wait, do I have extra right now? Oh, I can level her up right now. We're gonna make history live on video because this is a character that I have meant to work on for a long time now the only question is do i crown first or do i level up her because her burst i like just for extra damage and i like her normal attacks for plunge but i could crown first and then work on the other ones hmm i think we're gonna do these first just for a bit more of a well-rounded character and then we can i don't know we'll think about what we want to do next but anyways i'm very happy with my navia build my chiori is brand new i just started farming for husk she is like it, lo it looks a little bit better than it actually is I'm having a hard time getting an update but anyways in practice it's not actually that good and the reason why is because i'm using a defense goblet instead of a geo damage goblet i wonder if it would be ranked higher if i switched to a defense goblet instead but i think realistically my husk pieces are just not that good compared to everyone else's so but overall um, i'm fine i want to crown her and i think i'm going to leave her burst at eight and i think i'll crown her skill we'll see uh, my bennett build he's on my go-to artifact set well kind of a hybrid i guess apparently um, i usually run him on noblesse and sometimes on instructors I don't worry about, I used to worry about his crit rate and crit damage, but I've actually stopped. It's something that um, that I used to be a little more interested in. I am about getting some actually good damage off Bennett, because he does actually solid damage from popping his burst and his skill if you level it up, which I do have it crowned. But the thing is, now with Farina especially, I just kind of like to leave him on an HP build where I just use HP stuff and then he gets more healing for Farina. Um, I like to run him on Skyward Blade. It's actually my favorite Bennett weapon, even though I have Miss Splitter and I don't actually use Aika all that much anymore. I leave him on Skyward Blade because I just like the comfort from having the ER. Yes, if you're min-maxing, something like Miss Splitter or Aquila is better, but you don't lose that much base attack, like only 60 something base attack, which is only ends up being a couple percent of buff and to have the extra ER on Bennett, um, if that saves you time in your rotation, that will easily make up for buffing difference. The only time I'll actually use Miss Splitter is when I am doing something for screenshot, like I'm trying to find Raiden's max screenshot damage or something, and I do that very, very rarely. So my Shangling, however, is on a pretty decent build. I normally have, I have her optimized for the catch, optimized. You can hardly say optimized since she shares artifacts with so many other characters. I would like to farm Emblem more. Um, it's overkill, but I generally, I don't like to switch my characters all around all that much. I do for some showcases if the character's damage is really relevant, but often I'll just leave Shengling just like this. 
where she is on ER Sands and ER Weapon, which is excessive and you are losing out on Shangling's damage, but I don't like to spend a lot of time funneling Shangling. I don't like to miss time because of ER stuff, so I optimize for comfort, personally. Um, the feather is okay. The flower is okay. Actually, the flower is very good. It's very, very good, especially for if she's doing some vaping. Very, very excellent flower. One of the nice things about Shangling is that she uses emblem, emblem pieces very well, because not everyone wants EM, attack, ER, but she uses all of these stats so it's the easiest to roll good stats for your shangling um her headpiece quite good uh, i do have an onset goblet which seems bad at first glance but when you realize all of that is crit rate and the attack percent this is actually quite a very good goblet uh and the er sand this is my raiden's er sands before i got her an onset one so actually overall um one of a, one of my better builds and the reason why i use such a good build on shangling is because i use shangling a lot um i didn't used to i don't like her haircut i don't love to use her but I use her a lot now because she's on a lot of the teams that I use. I use Raiden and Navia, who both love Shangling. So if anything, I I, I used to ne not use any Shangling teams, but after um, but after Chevreuse came out and after Navia came out, now both my best teams want Shangling. But fortunately, either I put Farina with uh, with Navia, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, my Wanderer is actually pretty decently built. He doesn't rank in terms of top Wanderers because it's a pretty competitive environment, and you know mine isn't anything like that crazy but it's definitely solid it's definitely above average 77 193 with his essentially his signature weapon it even has a little hat right it actually matches him better than his own signature does which i find quite funny but maybe not matches better because the, the the aesthetic doesn't isn't quite as good as his own but it's still very good his artifact stats are very good it's over 200 crit value but yeah i honestly don't have that good of crit damage circlets so even though this circlet i mean it would be i think it's this one's slightly better so we could go with that it gives him a bit more attack but it's even not that much more uh feather or flower story it, it's okay it's good it could have rolled a lot better it rolled a lot into flat defense or into defense unfortunately the feather again could have rolled better but it is what it is the sands it's all right and the goblet is on set it's all right we just got all right pieces all across the board could have been a lot better this is probably a reason why my hyper wanderer isn't doesn't perform as well for me as other people's is i just didn't get god rolls on his set I have used them with Marishi Say. My Marishi Say pieces are better, so sometimes I use that. But I actually still got better damage in clear times with this, so I don't know. It's not one of my best build characters, but he's definitely built well enough to have some very good testing. Um, and he's 998, so pretty good overall talent build. When I play with him, I just keep in the back of my mind that someone super dedicated would have a slightly better Wanderer. And I also keep in mind that I am using a signature weapon, which kind of close, which obviously does close the gap. So I just keep when I test with him i just remember that i could be doing you know a bit faster clear times if i had a slightly better wanderer cause was one of the characters that i save resources on his weapon stays at level 70 because he has enough er from his pieces i don't actually ha even have that much er on his pieces but uh fav in general his em is not that great his build is honestly not that great i my talents are not very leveled up i could min max my cause a lot more but you know he has his main stats em pyro damage bonus what are you doing Kazua? how long has this been on here what cause what teams have i been running that have been gimped i don't even know when i i find myself not using Kazwa nearly as much as i used to which is pretty interesting um where was it this one looks fine i want crit rate er that looks perfect what's what can i switch up let's we'll take this and we'll switch it with this there we go that's the build we're supposed to have where where was my em oh my goodness it's very disconcerting i think it was probably when i was testing hyper bloom sometime i don't know um em with er some crit rate some em some er some crit rate i think one of these is wrong i don't know he performs very well and uh and i like Kazu a lot i don't worry too much about his artifacts because he just consistently performs very well uh shenha basically it's just attack 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 with hp um i ended up yeah we're sorry not with hp with er um i try and use her weapon sometimes i can't and i have to use fav but i try and use her weapon because i like it my ayaka i thought she was one of my best built characters but actually um i guess it's because she doesn't have enough er or because my pieces aren't as crazy as i thought but she ended up only being like a top 16 percent character where i thought she was gonna at least be top 10 so i think it is because of my er being too low let's see if there's anything i can do to get better er yeah we could switch for this one that would at least give us some more er but it really hurt it tanks our crit damage a little bit but maybe that's okay i don't know 
That actually doesn't change her ranking at all because she's not in the 120 ER category. So 118, I need 2% more ER to actually be in the next category. So that's why. My Sino, I don't have him set up right now, but I do have really good Thundering Fury artifact set pieces. So usually I'll do something like this. Oh no, he's using the off piece. When I actually use him, there we go. Now this is, this is what I, when I test him, he looks like this. Uh, lots of EM, really quite a lot of crit. All his pieces, I think, like this is attack, crit damage, EM, it's a good piece. Attack, crit rate, crit damage is almost a perfect piece, unbelievable. This is an excellent piece with that attack roll in there. The EM sands, very, very good. Electro damage bonus is correct. So all in all, really, really well built. Um, his talents aren't as high, but they're they're not bad still. Eight and nine, actually they're, I thought I was eight, eight, but so eight and nine is actually not bad. And then overall stat line looking very juicy. I wonder if I make any ranking with him. We'll have to wait for that to update. Maybe we'll come back to it. Um, my eye sh shares some of my Sino artifacts. Obviously, she uses two piece Thundering Fury, two piece Glad. I used to use two piece EM, but now that I use her with Raiden Cheverus, um, I don't do that as much. I have her signature weapon, and you can, even with a missing artifact, she still has this stat line. So you can imagine if I put that last one on there, it's very, very high. She's pretty well invested. Um, I love Yamiko. I use her a lot more now that Raiden Cheverus is actually good. My Raiden is one of my best built characters. I showed her stats at the beginning. I took off her goblet um, to make, to do my, to check Sino and the Akasha. So you can look at my stats from her in the beginning, but her other pieces are very good. The gob, the, 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 the hat is the only one that's sort of not as good. I wonder if I would get a better score if I actually did something. Yeah, because I have this piece that I could switch that has a bit more attack, uh, but a bit less crit damage. But I think that the attack is much more valuable. Uh, because you're, well, I mean, you're not much more valuable because you are with Bennett for Hyper, but you have Sara to give you more crit damage. So it makes her crit, crit ratio looks a little bit worse, but maybe overall it's more damage. But we'll come back to her with the Akasha rating as well. Uh, my Alhytham. I really like his build, um, 83, 203. I have Jade Cutter, decent talents, great artifact stat line. Um, yeah, I'm overall very, very impressed and happy with my Al Health. And one of my proudest pieces is this Elementary Sand, Elements Mastery Sands. It's so, so good for both Fischl and his, that's so good. It's insane for my Fischl as an on set, but it's also an insane off piece. So big, big fan of that. Um, yeah, my Al Hytham always performs well and his artifacts that, you know, his artifacts that back that up. Now he does definitely a neglected character she's not built all that well and um no i don't usually run her on this on this book <laughs> but yeah so this is her stat line i mean it's okay because she gets some elemental mastery conversion into crit rate so it actually ends up being all right she's got a pretty good sans pretty mediocre goblet for an off piece pretty mediocre hat well not not it's a it's a decent hat it has some crit damage but no other good stats a really really sad f flower this really could have rolled nicely but it just didn't and uh pretty mid feather overall like i'm not very happy with her stats but she's just such a strong character that i don't care she's also got some of my worst levels um let's level up the normal that's so, so so sick of looking at that so she's like i could get more value from leveling her up than leveling up a lot of characters on my account but this is like a problem with building so horizontally and one of my biggest frustrations is that i can't invest into the characters as deeply as i would like to like you can see i've got some one percent two percent characters but if if i was just allowed to farm i would just live in the emblem domain and gear up gear the crap out of my emblem characters and actually have like a top one percent ride and build because that's what i really really want but i can't do that because i have so many characters so i had i have to like spread myself so thin so nahida unfortunately is just like like, um, one of the points because she's just so strong at a baseline that she doesn't need that much investment to be OP. So that's why she's not that invested. Same with Nilu, um, you know, dock hands, but it's not even level 90. I could easily get more HP. Um, I've got two piece, two piece. Like this is an okay piece. This is a good piece. Like this is one of our better pieces with that HP percent, but like this doesn't even have flat HP. This has some flat HP. This has some flat HP. I mean, she's all right. She's, she's decently all right, but I don't level up her talent, even though I would like to for vape nilu but it's just one of those things um i think i will like to get her weapon though because i do love how nilu plays and i would like to just see that power bump a little bit but um she's always performed well for me even without her weapon 
by the way, my Raiden. So we'll go back over to my Raiden. Um, from changing this around, it did make my damage a tiny bit better, but it wasn't enough to bump me up in, uh, in any percentages. But so yeah, so an okay hat, a really, really impressive feather. Um, a couple wasted rolls in HP, but even still, okay, sorry, not, not a really, really impressive feather, a pretty impressive flower. Sorry, it's the feather that is really, really impressive. Like an insane amount of crit rate, the crit damage, the attack, the energy recharge, um, some low rolls for sure, but ended up being a really, really good piece and then a very good off piece. So I actually do think there's room to grow for my Raiden being a min maxer is there's room to grow for the flower um, and room to grow on the hat, but honestly, not that much. Like it's pretty, she's pretty well done, especially since we're kind of a little high on the crit rate and low on the crit damage so that Sara can compensate by giving us some extra crit damage so yeah really really big fan of my ride and build um i love it a lot obviously we've got her burst crowned and we have c4 but we refuse to unlock it at this point i think i will make an exception at some point but except for her all of my characters will always be at c0 except um and i may leave her at c0 forever but i think Raiden might be the character i eventually make an exception for because i personally do just i do really believe in investing vertically into your mains if once you've been playing the game for a long time. So she will be my one unrelatable character, but I still want to show the potential of C0 Raiden um, because I do believe that at, at the same time, even though I do believe that you should invest vertically into your favorite characters, the game is not actually hard enough to really warrant that. So the game is much a bit, it's, I always go back and forth. It's because I do love the challenge of playing the game at C0. It makes the, it makes the abyss actually feel like a challenge as opposed to when you get too many five star weapons and too many um you know too many constellations then the, the abyss starts feeling like a joke and if you i honestly if you play with c0 and four star weapons the abyss often feels at least at least challenging which is a really nice feeling um to have some challenging but it's also fun that the other side of the coin is it's fun to curb stomp the abyss after you've been playing for so long and poured so many resources into the game like resin resources so it can feel really nice to just curb stomp it so you know there's there's a pros and cons either way my ayato i have to rearrange a little bit um he's on four piece glad very very high crit rate um i obviously do have his signature so we'll put him on that um a bit too much crit rate to be honest i would like a crit damage mask but i just don't have one on glad which is hilarious for how much how many glad pieces i've gotten over the years let's see if we have a bit more crit damage on any of my hydro goblet pieces this one has has more why is my zhongli on a hydro goblet oh Okay, so at least now we're not over capping on crit. Pretty good build. Uh, have some attack here, some ER, some ER, some attack. Um, good crit, nothing else. Some attack, some HP. Honestly, even though the crit isn't perfect, isn't like that insane, this might be one of my better built characters. But I bet, I bet it's not, I bet it's not going to show up on Akasha very highly because, <coughs> because people have really, really good glad pieces. But I'm a fan of my Ayato. The problem is that Ayato, like, he's more of um, a hydro application bot than he is like a, a carry. So like, even though I'm level nine, I have good artifacts, I have his signature, he doesn't do that good of damage. I'm sorry. Like, it's okay. Like, it's not bad, but he's not like a hyper carry damage character. A lot of his value comes from applying a lot in a in good AOE of the hydro element. And, you know, my, even though my artifacts are good, that doesn't really translate into crazy performance from him. So, um, Yolan, she's on the wrong circlet, of course. Yeah, that's a lot better. I doubt this shows up at all. Like, honestly, my Yolan pieces, because she has to share emblem with so many other characters, they're not that crazy, but we got some ER, we got some ER, we got some ER. You know, I'm obviously prioritizing ER on a lot of these pieces, and then this has nothing good. So, like, she's, it's a pretty mid build. The weapon definitely hard carries. Um, and when I, and then I, but I also have this, I have this build uh, min max so that she can also use fav. So, my crit ratio is still good even if I switch to fav and that way I can easily switch back and forth because I'm often switching her to fav um, for free to play showcases so um, but overall similarly to Nahida even though like it's not like I have her crowned my skill could I would like to level nine this I'd like to crown her burst she still performs so well all the time no matter what whether she's on her signature or she's on fav she performs so well and does so much damage and the buffing is so good that she is a character that I can get away with investing 
investing into less um, and I can give the better artifacts the Shangling or ride in um, she has her C1 but again I don't I don't I, I try not to use the C1 at least when I'm particularly trying to gauge the power of C0 characters or free to play showcases then I I don't use her C1 um, which is nice that I have that option uh, I'm not gonna showcase my Kokomi it's clam I would like to work on her talents that's a big thing because I want to try like DPS Kokomi with Farina and stuff like that because I know it's good I just don't have I haven't looked into her talents all that much yet she's more built just to heal enough and do EM for Nilu and heal and do tenacity or clam for um for Ayaka uh but overall I like I like Kokomi for those teams especially Mayoi Mie is kind of a really unfortunate case because because even though I've farmed Emblem so much, I just cannot, for the life of me, get good Shimanawa pieces. Like she has an okay stat line, considering you know I have her for I have Rust, and it's got pretty good artifacts, but they're not they're not as insane as I would like. Like the ER is not useful for her, so we got some good crit rate rolls, but nothing else that good. Um, this is obviously an off piece, so it's gonna be great. But for a feather, like yeah, it's got some EM, so you know it's like good, and the EM Sans is pretty good. The power damage bonus is pretty bad, but it's just to make up for the fact that I literally don't have a single good flower. How weird is that? Like, Shimanawa, like, as much as I've farmed Emblem, I have nothing good to show for Shimanawa. This kind of reminds me that some people's artifact luck is just bad. Like, if anyone has the reverse luck and they have Emblem pieces the way I have Shimanawa pieces, I am so, so sorry. You've got like three to four sets, like two, at least two sets of Shimanawa that are better than your mid set of emblem that would suck so i'm very glad that this is my worst set but it's also sad because i love yoimiya um one day i will get a better yoimiya set hu tao basically shares a set with my novelette i think have i already showed off my novelette no so i'll show off my novelette right now they basically run the exact same artifact set although i do switch around things to give hu tao a bit more em but my my novelette artifacts are cracked look at the look at that crit ratio look at that stat line and then you add on top of that 36% crit rate on top of that. This is like, this is nuts. Like this piece is nuts. This piece is nuts because that HP, that HP is actually so valuable here because he's got so much crit that the HP is just extremely valuable. This has great crit ratio. The HP is unbelievable crit rate. The, the Sands is really good. Like this has one of my best build characters. This is a top 3% novelette. Um, so, you know, when I say that I, you know, I, I, I am glad that I have such a good novelette because because um, I can talk about him and say that I think that he isn't quite as good as some people say. Like people say he's like a tier zero character, like head and shoulders above other DPS. I don't personally think so. And I have a really good novelette. So it's not like I don't think that because my novelette isn't as well built. But you know, to be clear, I do think he is the best DPS in the game. So you know, we're not underrating him here. Uh, but what are my talent levels? I don't remember. Nine, six, and six. Okay, so they're good. Talent no problem there. And my Hu Tao shares the same build. So her builds obviously cracked as well. The basic difference is I just use the Elemental Mastery Sands. I guess I can switch them over so you can see the full stat line. Yeah, there it is. Very, very built. This is like a... I, ironically, it's actually a higher percentage Hu Tao build than Novalette. I think this is a 2% Hu Tao. Yeah, that's what it was. But my Novalette's like a 3%, even though I actually have slightly better artifacts for the Novalette. But eh, it, I, I mean, it, it's whatever. They're both they're both insanely well built. Uh, my Kuki, she just wears four piece flowers. Totally fine. My weapon isn't even leveled all the way. Way. saving resources there my official uh now my official you are about to see my best built character when we switch her onto this goblet this is a top one percent official this is one of the best officials in the entire world um yeah for aggravate official so obviously the goblet that we've been sharing around the mask with lots of crit damage uh, incredible flower that elemental mastery just is the cherry on top feather is sort of just okay and then again the sands is carried so this is a really, really well-built Fischl. I do generally not even use this build on Fischl. Sometimes I do, but sometimes, but often I'll just use it on Farina. Um, it's not as crazy on Farina because the, the, the elemental mastery like doesn't quite add up the same way, but she's still incredibly well-built. One of my better characters for sure. Still, up, sh still shows up very high on the Akasha ranking. Yeah, love my Farina, love my Fischl. Toma, I don't have him put together right now. He just uses EM, like there's nothing really to say 
say here. Um, my Zhongli has been neglected. He uses tenacity, but I was testing out Mona a little bit. So we can rip Mona's artifacts and put them back on Zhongli. So just tenacity. I have a like a 50 100 crit ratio just in case I decide to use his burst. Hopefully it crits. Hopefully it does a little bit of damage. Um, just eight and eight. Just the kind of a lower invested Zhongli. I would actually like to level up him to 90 and take his skill to 90 because there are some really aggressive enemies and I would like to have that shield strength. But most of the time his shield is fine. So um, yeah, most of the time it's fine. But I would like to have that little bit of extra insurance. My Venti, probably one of my worst built characters because I'd actually really like to invest into him properly because I think people underrate Venti these days because they only use him in the certain content. I mean, I think, sorry, I wouldn't say this. It's not that I think people that underrate him. It's that I am worried that I'm underrating him because I sort of just have him leveled up to 80 and which is kind of just what you want so that he can do the sucky thing because the sucky thing is where he shines. But what I would like to do is either max him out for swirl damage or max him out for attack damage crit and make sure that you're actually getting value out of him even when he's not in his optimal position so that you're at least still getting some value and that might help him feel less bad in non-optimal scenarios. So that's one of my goals for the account is to work on Venti. My Eula is in a rough way because I was switched on to Mari Shisei. I do have a very good Pale Flame set for her, or at least a pretty, okay, not a very good, like, but a pretty decent Pale Flame set for her. Where did her, is the flower her off piece? Maybe it is. Ah, Navi is using the, the sands. I'll have to try and remember to switch this back. So it's kind of a weird build. So like, we have a very good mask for being on set, um, a pretty good feather. I don't remember what off piece I'm supposed to use. Imagine this is level 90, so we have a lot more overall crit rate for this, but a pretty good, you know, this is our off piece. Um, pretty okay, pretty good, considering we need some ER on her and get some crit damage there. And then this is a really, really funky goblet because it didn't get any crit rolls, but it did get a lot of attack percentage rolls. So it actually ends up being a pretty decent goblet on her especially if you're not using Bennett, which I usually don't use Bennett with her. So her stat line actually ends up being over 200% crit value. When I run her with Farina nowadays, this set is pretty much garbage, unfortunately. So now I run her with the broken Marishisei set that I've showed you already 10 times. And I do have her her burst crowned because uh, I just wanted to see maximum damage per screenshot. And honestly, this Abyss, she's actually felt pretty good. So I'm kind of, I know I said I'd prom I promised a Eula guide. I'm not sure if I'm doing a Eula guide right now or next time around. Um, I kind of missed the boat on the Eula hype, if there was any Eula hype. So I might have to wait until next time around for, for Eula guide, but we'll see if I can, we'll see if I can get it together. I, it's really this, to be honest with you, the serpent spine testing really took a toll on me. I'm not kidding. From Edo, testing Edo and testing some of Eula. I do have a couple Eula clears because I was testing Eula um, a bit ago. When I, as soon as she was revealed, I started testing her, but the serpent spine testing really takes a toll um, on me, especially when characters like Eula and Ito are combo heavy and you mess up your combo or you miss your crit or for Eula in Eula's case. So it's really a pain and I don't have the resources right now to level up Beacon to test her. So it might have to wait until next time, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Baiju. My other Eula guide is not bad. It's, and it's, it's just that now she wants Farina. I, I really do want to update it though. It's, it's, it's tough guys. It's tough, tough out here. Feel bad for me. Um, streaming is the hardest job in the world. Um, my Baiju is is whatever. I would actually, again, like to, similar to Zhang Li, I'm skimping because he's a defensive character and you can just play better. But I would like to get him to 90 and level up his talent so you can he can heal just a bit more. And I don't have any good catal any more catalyst drops. This is R4, this is R2, and those are all the catalyst drops I've ever gotten in my life. So he's a bit lacking in heals, but it is what it is. Uh, my Dea just shares the Mari Shisei um, and she is 788. I would like to get her higher because I want to get her up to 9999 so that I can use her in plunge and um, as a DPS, but she's just going to have to wait. This is, once again, it's hard to get enough resources to build everyone up to a really high degree, but I'm trying, you know, uh, Yunjin, level 80, um, decently leveled burst. Um, looks like she's sharing her artifacts with Ido and Chiori. I think I'll show you my Yunjin, though. I think I'm pretty proud of how she turned out. Let's see here. Um, we'll do this and we'll just switch this for now. Okay, I think it's something like this. So a D, like you need a lot of crit rate on Yun Jin to proc Favonius reliably because your, your skill only has one hit. Uh, so 44% crit rate, not ideal, but not awful. Um, lots of ER and some decent defense 
defense. It's not crazy, but it's decent for four piece husk. Uh, my ER would be higher if I was using my level 90 weapon. So yeah, 210 ER, cause you need a lot of ER to get her to work properly. So um, I like Yunjin, I'm a fan. Um, I think she's good with Yuemiya, but I don't think she's that great outside of that, but we'll talk more about her later. But yeah, that's my Yunjin. My Mika, I just got him to C6 and now I really want to test Eula. Oh my God, I really do want to make that Eula guide. Oh, it's just so hard because my Ido guy did so badly uh, because I released it after Ido's banner was already out. And I know that Eula guide would probably do just as bad or worse. And I, so I really, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my Layla. So my Layla shares artifacts with Zhongli, unfortunately, but she uses a crit damage mask. And because my Zhongli tenacity artifacts do actually have some crit on them, she ends up doing pretty good damage in in um, mono cryo and I give her the harbinger of dawn because it's perfect for her and she does really good damage um, in mono cryo you get cryo resonance this isn't the right flower or this isn't the right oh this is the right um yeah that's right that's right that's right okay we're just a bit low on crit rate that's fine oh it's not including the harbinger of dawn crit rate passive I guess it doesn't show on the screen so you can just imagine an extra 28 percent crit rate on there so we're flying high and she's doing good damage the only problem is I only have c3 when we get C4 uh, and when we get C6 she will actually do even better damage so I'm really really excited for my mono cryo with Layla um, after that because I love it it's just such a comfy way to play mono cryo my Edo you just saw my Edo guide so I won't show him off um, too much oh but my, by the way my Layla's talents are just eight and seven nothing crazy I would like to get her burst up again because um, for more damage but you know my Edo um, my uh, animal traveler obviously his talents aren't leveled up but my geo ones are I'm not gonna go switch right now. My Jean's artifacts are on my Shenyun, so we'll get there eventually. Um, I played Jean a lot before Shenyun came out, and my Jean is technically C6, but I have only activated up to C2 because that was before I became a content creator. Um, my Ganyu is actually very impressive. My Ganyu is a top 3% melt Ganyu, which I'm pretty proud of, honestly. And I just got Hunter's Path accidentally while going for beacons, so she will soon have more options. Although I will have to adjust her artifact build because I only have crit rate um, circlets for Wander's Troop, although maybe I won't farm I obviously won't farm Wander's Troop, but I don't know. I love Ganyu's design a lot these days, and I'm liking her playstyle more than I used to now that um, I feel better. I al I've always used her burst, but people have said in the past that her burst is not good to use in Melt, but it actually is. So haha, take that. Culture, enjo culture enjoyers winning. Um, but her overall stat line is pretty crazy if I use a crit weapon like this. It still is really good, even if I use my Amos bow. It's just like less visually impressive off the hop, but but it's more impressive if I go like this and looking at the the individual stats um, I think I wasn't using this no I was yeah so looking at the visual stats this is my off piece it's not like absolutely nutty but it's the best I have um, this piece is nice because it has a lot of EM which is really good for Melt Ganyu this piece is pretty good it's not like the most insane piece but this piece really hard carries because that's a ton of crit and rolls into EM so that's nutty the EM sands is also pretty nutty and so overall we just landed in a really well rounded rounded Ganyu build and Akasha really likes this one and I like it too it's not so bad I like using it I also really like using her on mono cryo just with the two piece two piece that's actually my I like that's actually I I, pre, I prefer that it's it's good mostly in AoE not so good in single target melt is better in single target I have a goal eventually to build my Ganyu up a little bit more um, maybe if maybe if as soon as she gets a buff because I really love her design especially with this new skin um so I plan on becoming like a true Ganyu main at some point soon and really really investing into her whether there's a new artifact set or a new teammate or whatever I really see Ganyu improving in the future I'm not exactly sure how I just feel like all of the original DPSs like Hu Tao and Zhao have gotten so many dedicated supports that I really I really and uh, it supports artifact sets buffs I really see Ganyu getting something in the future I just don't know what or when so I'm kind of scared to hyper invest into her but I will work on her uh, Hunter's Path and hopefully we get some 
um, we get some artifacts that can support the Hunter's Path, so I'm excited for that. Um, Kaching, obviously she shares my Sino artifacts, so she's really, really well built. Um, I don't play her as much now that I play Yaimiko more, but I still really, really like her. Such fond memories of playing Kaching. I usually use her with Jade Cutter. I haven't actually built her with Miss Splitter yet. I should try that at some point, but basically I haven't played her since I made the most recent guide. There's just so many characters. The Electro characters hurt. Like I don't play, I don't even play Yai DPS because I just play Raiden. You know, I just love Raiden so much. Uh, Tainari, obviously he shares my Al Haytham artifact set. Um, so you've already seen that. He doesn't have the craziest talents, but he is level 90, and that's the main thing for spread. Um, Farina, we already showcased my Farina. She's insane. Farina's just an insane character, and then my artifact set's really good for her, and well-invested talents. Um, I already showed you this. My Klee 888, nothing crazy, but I showed, I just did a Klee guide, so if you want to see my Klee guide, go check that out. Um, my Noel, I took her to level 90. Um, I took her to 8, 11, 10. They're not, I mean, you know, I had someone in the comments tell me that the reason why you feel underwhelmed with Noelle is because you didn't get her Redhorn Stone Thresher um, and because you didn't crown all of her abilities. And it's like, bro, if I have to get a character, their signature weapon that's not even that much better than the, the, the Serpent Spine and I have to get a C6 Goro 4 star to support and the best support in the game and I have to crown her abilities to make her good I'm sorry, that is not acceptable. Noelle is good but she's overrated now like people by some people right I think a lot of people know that she's good but not insane but I think people think that Farina made her this like insane character and she's good but she's definitely not insane Sayu I really like I want to make a Sayu guide as soon as Sayu comes back to banner I'm gonna make a Sayu guide because uh she is so much fun um I love using her on Farina National it is so so good but my my investment into her is basically just level 90 because talents don't do damage uh she does enough healing already <laughs> um I did level up her talents when I tested her with Farina I leveled up her talents on the media server so I wouldn't waste books and then unleveled them when I came like they unleveled when I came back um but but for damage like these don't matter uh for sucrose obviously level 90 it's bb what am I going to really showcase for that dory I actually have worked on her talents they're pretty decent especially for an aggravate dps and I will be doing a dory guide that's my next my next guide is a dory guide so get ready for that um razor level 90 um virgin razor is what I did that for his talents aren't updated because yeah we just use them for burgeon around here but i think now with farina i i still haven't seen anyone do multi like rainbow razor i think that would be the name rainbow razor where you do physical damage and electro damage buffed at the same time by farina and then i don't know you just cook there i feel like there's some cooking to be done with farina razor because she can buff, buff multiple damage types and then you can run attack sands and attack goblet on your razor i feel like there's some cooking to be done problem is Plunge Razor is probably just going to be better than that, but I'd still like to cook it at some point, but I would need a lot of talent books and yeah. Uh, Lisa, I love my Lisa guide. My Lisa guide is really good. Go watch it. Lisa is actually good. And I do have her C4. I just got her C4 from the Chronicled Wish. So I will be testing out Lisa more at some point. There's just a lot of characters to test. Kave, I'm waiting before his C6 before I can test him again. I leveled him to 90 and it's like my biggest Genshin regret, even though I can't regret it because I needed to. Um, it was just so much resources for so little reward. Um, but I think he's still fine with Nilu. I would just like to get his C6 to really make a final judgment on him. Um, Yao Yao is level 90, etc. Candice is level 90, same deal. I did level her, I leveled her normal attack up in the media server for plunge and that was pretty cool. I kind of liked it a lot. My Sing Cho also sharing artifacts, sharing emblem is always a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. I find myself not actually using Sing Cho that much these days lately, like I talked about in my last video. Um, Barbara level 90. I would like to try DPS Barbara at some point, like Vape Barbara and Plunge Barbara and stuff like that, but we'll have to wait eventually, eventually. I'll be out just did a mono geo video go check that out um my zhao his is level 80 i'm working on level 90 i'm working on his talents i i played him i just tested him for before the video on a friend's account so i'm working on him he's one of my technically unbuilt characters i think i have two, him and gaming are my two technically not fully built characters um i actually do have the talent books i just don't want to spend the mora yet because i'm scared to run out of mora and not be able to level up arlecchino so we're just holding 
leveling off. Shenyan, another character that's taking some of the taking the load off my account by not being level 90 and not having a fully invested burst, but I would like to 90 her and invest in her burst and invest in honestly I really want to invest in her normal attack and in her skill because DPS Shenyun's actually good and is really really underrated like really really underrated. Uh, Risley he uses my broken Marishi Say pieces as well but we have attack you can use attack or em on him i even have an onset goblet for him which is pretty pretty neat and we have good em we obviously have his signature weapon so we've got a pretty awesomely built risley to be honest um pretty darn scrumptious oh and this is a five piece so i can actually change any one of these to something better i won't right now but maybe this piece did we do we did attack and we we did attack and we have well that's not that much em actually i don't aloy i haven't actually tested her yet but she is built so that's kind of of nifty um chi chi child i don't have anything to show off for these guys lenny uses the same artifacts as risley except he has a pyro goblet diluc also uses those goro ning wong let me see if there's anything else worth showing off because we're kind of in just like they're all leveled they don't have their own signature artifacts that they all just share artifacts with the other characters cheveris is a character that i would like to level up more because she is c6 but i would like to max her out her her personal damage for my raiden teams because i think that's what that would be very very it would just add a bit more damage and spread out the damage profile a little bit which would be nice because we have the rotation time um but the rest basically just share <coughs> share artifacts with the other characters. So that is what a top percentage account looks like. Do I have tips? My first tip is don't do this and horizontally invest because it really hampers my ability to vertically invest. Like the fact that I only have a few one or two or three percent characters is too bad. Like I should have I should have way, way more, but it's fine because I'm I'm really trying to test all my characters evenly. So like even though they're not all built evenly, most of my DPSs that we're comparing have good artifacts and Mario should say has been the best thing ever to happen to my account because I got I have like one and a half good sets and I can just share them out amongst so many characters because so many characters best teams are with Farina eh? I know how people feel about that but that's okay so my biggest recommendation honestly is don't be afraid to like farm for artifacts don't be afraid to level up artifacts don't be able don't be afraid to spend days or weeks or even months in an artifact domain for a character that you really love because because it's so gratifying when you actually get a perfect set and sometimes you might go on a lucky streak and just get like finish up your set really quickly like I did with Navia. Sometimes I may have to farm for a really long time. Like I farmed for truly, truly months and months and months before I had anywhere near this ride in set. Ouch, where did my where did my piece go? And it's still not her final form, I think. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this was interesting and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.